so much uh, for coming tonight for this program with Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Jeffrey Gettleman, East Africa Bureau Chief for the New York Times. But now let me tell you a little bit uh, about Global Minnesota. For those of you who are new to our organization, welcome. We're a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization that fosters international understanding by informing, connecting, and engaging thousands of Minnesotans each year on a variety of global topics. We're also a World Affairs Council, and we're one of 94 councils in the United States, but I'm happy to tell you that we are one of the top 10. So that says something about our state. So now let's go on to the program. In April of 2012, New York Times East Africa Bureau Chief Jeffrey Gettleman was awarded the Pulitzer Prize for international reporting for in the Pulitzer jury's words, his vivid reports often at personal peril on famine and conflict in East Africa. As East Africa Bureau Chief, he covers 12 countries and he's focused much of his work in Kenya, the Congo, Somalia, Sudan, and Ethiopia. And before this posting, he worked for the LA Times in New Jersey, Baghdad, and Atlanta. One of the things that I wanted to make sure that I mentioned to you is that currently he is on a book tour uh, of his new book, Love Africa, which incidentally I read this weekend and I couldn't put it down. Uh, also tonight, uh, after Jeffrey speaks for about 25 minutes, there will be a Q&A and that's going to be moderated by Tom Gita. And Tom Gita is a former Global Minnesota board member, but um, also he is the president and publisher of Mishale, which is the leading African community newspaper in Minnesota. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Jeffrey Gettleman. Thanks everybody for coming tonight. Um, I really appreciate it. It's totally true that I had initiated this because I cover Somalia very closely. And I had thought that it would be really interesting to come to a part of the United States where people would understand and care about the issues that I'm writing about. I spent a lot of time in Iraq, um, which was a very traumatic experience because it was, it was it was more murder than it was war. It was covering suicide bombings and walking into to buildings where people had been blown up and people were crying and miserable and blaming the Americans. Um, and just this trauma across that country that had been unleashed by the American invasion. Even if it wasn't the, the American troops that were causing this violence directly, all that had started when Saddam Hussein was pushed out and that country was put into chaos. Um, and so I did that. And then finally in 2006, I got my dream job, which was to, to live and work in Nairobi, in East Africa. And I had been waiting years to, to do this. Um, and it's been, it's been a wonderful experience. It's been exactly what I hoped it was. It's allowed me to spend a lot of time in a part of the world that I care a lot about and to shine a light on it. But I'm often torn because what brought me to Africa in the first place was this sense of people being close to each other and connected and that warmth and that spirit. But in my job as the New York Times correspondent, I'm often covering conflict. Um, and so that's, I, I'm sort of seeing two, storylines from my vantage point in Nairobi of this part of Africa. And one of them is some countries are stuck. And they, they are, their governments are really bad. And there's a lot of conflict. And there's not really a clear way out. And that's true for Somalia. That's true for Congo. That's true for Central African Republic. That's true for South Sudan. And a lot of the forces that have put these countries in, these, in this place, they go way back to colonialism, to the Cold War, where the United States or the Soviet Union dumped tons of weaponry in these places to make them our ally. We supported really bad leaders that robbed these countries blind, and then we just abandoned them in 1990, 1991. When the Cold War ended, we just said, you know what? We don't really care about Somalia anymore. We don't really care about Congo anymore. And there's no accident, actually, 
that the 1990s were among the most violent times in Africa because that's right when the Cold War ended and the West disengaged. And you had civil wars in Somalia and Ethiopia and Congo and Eritrea and Liberia and Sierra Leone and Rwanda. Like some of the worst things happened in that period. Uh, and it's no accident. So that's, that's one thread that I find myself covering is these failed states. But at the same time, I think we're seeing another story in Africa, and I see that from Kenya, which is rapid economic growth and new technology and progress and a, and a, and a, and a growing middle class that, ha that is very professional, that um, should encourage a lot of hope. And they're happening at the same time. In Somalia, for instance, it's almost in the same place. Because in, in Mogadishu, the capital, there's a lot of development these days. I've been going back there for years. Um, and when I first got there, all the buildings were full of, of bullet holes. And the whole city was slowly crumbling. Um, but, but since then, this was, that was when I started. Since then, the, the, there's been enormous growth. And people are buying these houses and investing in them. And there's a dry cleaners in Mogadishu now. And ATMs. Um, and you know, some things, you see these cultures changing really fast. So with that, I would love to take your questions. And I really appreciate you guys listening to my spiel. Um, and thank you for, uh, for coming tonight. Okay, Karibu sana. Asante sana. You know, uh, Jeff actually speaks very fluent Swahili. Uh, he can actually put some native speakers to share. So, uh, Karibu sana. And uh, that was uh, quite an inspiring talk. Thank you. And, um, you know, this di discussion, we're going to actually rely mostly on your questions. I'm not going to do much talking here. But uh, while I wait for the questions to come, uh, I do have a couple uh, to kind of uh, set the stage for uh, tonight's discussion. There is, uh, we, I kind of want to get a sense of how you deal with the two Africas that you just mentioned up here. Uh, because as a person, I, I noticed that, um, you know, I've been